know, the heart of Jesus is revealed in the most complete revelation that we have of his praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Right? That's, that's his prayer, I'll tell you. He prayed to surrender his will to the will of the Father. And I've talked about this a lot, you know, the song. I love the song, I Surrender All. And I, and I caution people if I'm somewhere ministering and I ask for that song to be sung. If you don't mean it, don't say it. You're, you're responsible for all of the words that come out of your mouth. And people say, well, that's a difficult thing. Surrendering my will is a difficult thing. Of course it is. It is the process of truly dying to self. You want to know something? It was difficult for Jesus. Yes. It was his will to surrender his will. But listen to this verse from the Gospel of Luke, Luke 22, 44. And being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he was praying, not my will, but thy will be done. You think it was any easier for him? He, he was truly man, truly yes. God, but truly man. It's hard, but if your prayer life is not surrendered to the will of God, you'll have no real prayer life. Not at all. You will be saying, it's easy to say words just repetitiously and not have any meaning to them. But I promise you, that's not the desire of God. And you'll find out the hard way to do that. What is that? I mean, what is the purpose of prayer? Why do we, why do we pray? Well, I need this and I need that. And I, you know, the purpose of prayer is to get us to listen to God. I, I, I talked a lot in our last program about prayer is not talking to God, it is talking with God. It is conversation with the Lord God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. That ought to excite you, okay? But the purpose is to get us to listen to God. It's not about changing God's mind. It's about changing our hearts. So often we go into prayer and it's like we're telling God what to do and how to do it. And, you know, it says, let a man examine himself. Examine yourself and see if that's part of your prayer life. Right. All right? And not only how and, and what to do, telling him when to do it. Oh, well, yeah. We, remember, he's Lord, we're not. That's okay. Right. And, and before you start to pray, it's always well to remember the Lord's instruction through James. And he said, this you know, my beloved brethren. But everyone must be quick to hear and slow to speak. So slow to anger too. Yeah. We've got to be quick to hear and slow to speak. There's a very, very simple logic to all of this. You know, James also said, the effective prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Our prayers should have effect. Yes. But then Jesus said, uh, that was James 5, 16, by the way. Let me give you the scripture references so you can go back and check yes. what I'm saying. Jesus said in Matthew 21, 22, and all things that you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. But that belief can't be, you know, what you dream up. It says, you know, in Proverbs 3, not to lean on your own understanding. Because it says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. The believing is faith, and the faith comes by hearing him. This may be one of the most important verses of all when it comes to prayer. And this is what John wrote in his first letter, 1 John 5.14. This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, it's a done deal. That's my paraphrase, but go read it and see that's not what it says. So if we're praying according to his will, how do you know what his will is? You see, you will certainly and truly know God's will in your life when you begin to pray, when your heart cries out the Lord's Prayer. Father, not my will, thy will be done. Okay? So it's that circle, but it comes around, and it's always about the will of God. And that should be our heart's desire, is to be walking in His will, not our own. You see, I, I listen, I, we've been traveling, and I've been preaching and teaching for 40 years now. And I've been to a lot of places, and I've heard a lot of people say, well, it's like the heavens are closed. It's like my prayers go up this high and drop to the ground. So if it ever seems to you like the Lord is deaf to your prayers, it can only be that you're being deaf to His Word, to His will. That's right. And I say you, well, you know what? 
That applies to me, it applies to Alice, it applies to all of us. Because God can't do anything wrong. Yes. God is not, you know, he's not there, okay? Uh, the Lord's hand is not so short and it, it, that it cannot save. Neither is his ear so dull that it cannot hear. Isaiah 59, right? God hears. But he can turn a deaf ear to prayers that are not in his will. The confidence we have comes from praying what we know to be his will in our life. on my own I force you to leave my heart was like stone I would not believe but now I'm alone I just want to receive you back Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice.